Hello, Sidewalk Cafe, Andy Folk Night, Night 5. Woo! Feels good. Night 5. Not too close to the beginning, not too close to the end. About right in the middle. I am the bitter poet. Thank you, Annie. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Annie, for booking me tonight. I appreciate it. It'd be great to be back here after so many years with my, with my beautiful wife and my beautiful child. Isn't that sweet? Look at all those cameras flashing and going off on that. Hey, what about me? Come on. You'll be up there all night. I am the bitter poet. <laughs> All right. I am the bitter poet even though I've never been published and I'm still misunderstood. I'm happy to be here tonight to read some of my goddamn poetry. When I fall asleep, I can't breathe. I wake up gasping for air. I need to see a doctor, one that my insurance covers. Something's wrong, cause a guy's gotta breathe, you know. I shouldn't be here, I should be at home looking at the names of doctors in the insurance company's big book of doctors. But here I am with my headache and my coffee and my dreams, and my day is all planned out. I will cry at my haircut, I will cry at my therapy, I will cry at my day job. Yes, there amongst the art for sale at auction, I will cry, and then I will go home and cry myself to sleep for now and have them wake up again, angry at the doctors, angry at the insurance company, angry at the girl who won't call me back. Her name is Alexis, she works at the Simon & Schuster audiobook department. She's got red hair and green eyes, and I was sure we were falling in love. Something's wrong, a guy's gotta breathe, you know. I'm writing a book title advice from an old poet to another old poet always do your dishes you never know when the water might run out always be nice to young women who are nice to you even if you do not love them the ones you love will treat you poorly but worse avoid you and ignore you get up early to write your stories at 7 a.m the coffee tastes like magic at 10 a.m it tastes like medicine Stay up late if you can, be in silence. That's the only way to find out whether or not your apartment is really haunted. <laughs> if there are dirty sheets to pick up, pick them up off your bedroom floor and put them in a bag for dirty sheets and dirty clothes. Unless they are the dirty clothes of your lover, then leave them where they fell. Save the memory of that moment. There will come a time soon enough when she will no longer be interested in tearing her clothes off for you. There will come a time soon enough when her clothes and the care and the maintenance of them will be more important to her than getting naked with you. If there are dirty sheets, if there are new sheets to purchase, you gotta purchase them because there are some stains in life you cannot remove. And it's better to be unburdened by memories of good sex with old girlfriends, memories running over and over in your head like the looping photo slideshow on her own MySpace page. Get out of town! Go quickly! Carry very little! It's important to arrive at your destination free, especially for you the brown and your shoes you bought for you last fall, just as she was disappearing from your life. Never, never give her, never ask for anything that you want, because she'll give it to you. Then she'll silently hate you for months. She'll silently hate you. In fact, she'll break up with you without really telling you that she has broken up with you. And when she does tell you that she has broken up with you, it'll be over dinner at your favorite restaurant. Now you can never go back there again. Something's wrong. A guy's got to breathe, you know. Advice from an old poet to another old poet. Live alone, live alone, live alone, live alone. Thank you, thank you, uh, thank you, anti folk fest. Uh, as a poet, of course, as a poet, of course, I'd rather be an actor. This next piece is my attempt to uh, embody a very noble character I've seen on the streets of our city. Very noble character. are important for attracting women if you're a young man. Always be yourself. It inspires confidence. You 
you never have too much confidence in your appearance. Don't compare yourself to others. Wear the clothes and hairstyle you want to wear. Young man's profile is just as important as his health, maybe more. Don't be afraid to be different. Difference can be attractive to women who are looking for adventure. She's more likely to talk to you if you don't look like her father. Eventually she may end up with someone exactly like her father. But for now, you can be strange enough for her to find exotic but not threatening. Go ahead, step outside the bounds. She'll appreciate it. Even if she doesn't want to date, you can be friends and share things like hair gel, advice on conditioner. Or... <laughs> Go ahead, do it. Because this is the modern world. I am tall and I'm thin. I wear my hair in a bun. I might be vegetarian. I wear my hair in a bun. I got a Danish girlfriend. I wear my hair in a bun. A ponytail won't do. <laughs> All my heroes are Hindu. <laughs> Sensitivity is necessary to win the trust of a young woman's heart. Always listen, sympathize, and respect her opinion. She'll appreciate that more than anything you could ever buy her. Meditation is proven to reduce the risk of stroke. No young lady wants to be uh, with a vegetable. In some cultures, your body is considered a temple. Stock your temple with incense, candles, and modal music. When she's leaving after a visit, bow and affect a prayer position. It's a sign of respect. Got more soul than a hipster with my hair in a bun. You'll never call me mister with my hair in a bun. I'm soulmates with your sister with my hair in a bun. Hot yo, good Tai Chi. Capoeira, mat based Pilates. <laughs> Some in our society will look down on you. Not so much in urban centers where diversity is prized, but in smaller towns and hamlets. Don't let this Western negativity stop you from being yourself. All men wish they could be Samson. All men wish the power of their hair required restraint. Restraint and discipline are the most masculine of all traits as is generosity and openness to nature. The ideal of the Western man is limiting. Don't be fooled. If you want to walk this world as a unique person, rewards will come to you. Follow my advice and you will stand out. The young man's guide to being an individual. I am shirtless on my skateboard with my hair in a bun. I'm busking with my banjo with my hair in a bun. I'm sipping my espresso with my hair in a bun. But I won't do a chignon. No chignon, no. <laughs> Je porte mes cheveux dans une bun. Thank you. Very noble character. Very noble character. In our midst. I, uh, I was, uh, before, before I was, long before I was married, I had the opportunity to date an actress for about six weeks. It was quite wonderful. And she went away on a vacation by herself to the Far East, Central Asia. She came back. She showed me her travel photos. I thought we had a nice reunion, but it turns out she was no longer interested in dating me. I was brokenhearted. I wrote her this love poem. It's in the form of a dirge. <laughs> Can I do a dirge for you? Thank you. Thank you. Sven! 
She's gone. She booked herself on a dangerous dames of downtown burlesque theme cruise to the North Sea. I'm alone, I accept it. Let go of all your memories of her bitter. Let go of your memory of the way she used to shout her fiery affirmations. The universe wants to fuck my truth because my truth is hot. Let go of your memories of her angry outbursts. God damn it, a blowjob is not sex. It's just fucking fooling around. Yes, let go of all those memories, bitter. Look elsewhere. Look uptown. There's a real estate boom happening in Midtown. New towers being built, filled with beautiful workers. Beautiful single women who are all acting like they're in their early 30s. Thousands of them. Maybe a million. <laughs> Look there in those midtown towers, bitter for the beautiful uptown corporate middle manager she's beautiful and she works in the middle of a corporation she's there in a tower 60 hours a week and when she's not she's probably taking a continuing ed class at nyu she's got a single season ticket to jazz at lincoln center She's got a regular share on Fire Island with a group of friends who are all very important people in her industry. She takes annual vacations to St. John's with her best girlfriend who is a very important person in her industry. Every third Sunday of the month she meets for brunch with her all-female book club. She watches three Netflix movies a week. Where does she find the time? Find her, find her, find her. And invite her to the Morgan Library on Friday night to see the Irving Penn portraits of great artists. But be sure to talk about artists in the third person, they, them, those people. And don't tell her what you do. If you have to tell her you're a writer, tell her you're a writer for the pharmaceutical industry. Tell that you actually enjoy the challenge of making the required disclosures on drug label sound benign and pleasurable. And be sure to express lots of anger, resentment, and resistance at all attempts by the government to insert itself into our lives. Tell her you believe the market should be free. Free the market unregulated. Set it free. Tell her you believe that's the American way. Tell her, just look at this Morgan Library, for example. It's a beautiful castle built by a mighty oligarch. 
We wouldn't have it now if there had been market regulation in its day. It's a beautiful castle built by a mighty oligarch. And today it is filled with the portraits of flaky artists. Most of those artists drank themselves to death. Most of those artists fucked around a lot. Most of those artists wore funny clothes. Look at them all now, hanging on the walls of the oligarch's mansion. Follow that path better. Lay those capitalism as orgasm lines down on her and she's gonna swoon. And when she swoons, catch her. Catch the beautiful uptown corporate middle manager in your arms. And happiness. Thank you. Thank you very much. I just want to get a round of applause for Bob behind the soundboard. He's doing a great job tonight, Bob. Thank you. Let me take this out to let you guys know you've been listening to The Bitter Poet. Uh, he's gonna do he, he, two more? Two yeah. more, if I can. All right, and uh, there's his next poem. I'm coming around with the mail to draw for him. Here's I Walk a Dope Charge Cover. Pass the draw around for your artist. That's how to get paid. Five dollars suggested donation. Please get some money ready. Put your hands together one more time for the Bitter Poet. Thank you. Our neighbors, they smoke the ones below. A great battle has started over Sherry's cigarette smoke. It's a killer, they say, I want to live, I want to have kids someday. <laughs> and the kids shouldn't have to smoke with the neighbors below. He'll breathe clean air, but yeah, it's the city I know. Outside our bedroom, a building crumbles. There's dirt everywhere. There's dirt on our sheets, dirt on our food, dirt on our bed, dirt on the loose. Under our bed, the cat chases dirt like it's a live dirt mouse. Let's forget about the dirt and cherry cigarettes. Forget about the dirt and cherry cigarettes. Roll over to me and let's. Our neighbors next door play video games all night. Guns blast through our bedroom wall. It's a great military fight. We lie in our dirty bed and contemplate sex. As the video bombs go off, oh, the fictional death. But suddenly it's quiet and we roll over to each other and we listen and we laugh at the boy next door in underwear shooting at jets let's forget about the dirt and cherry cigarettes forget about the dirt and cherry cigarettes roll over me and let's forget Once again, Annie, for having me. I really appreciate it. And uh, thanks. Thanks for giving a round of applause to Annie. She's great. She's doing a wonderful job. And Annie, you're playing later with your band, right? I'm playing by myself. By yourself. Wow. Well, we will be here for that. Thank you very much. I am the Bitter Poet. That's my final song for you tonight. Thanks again. You guys have been awesome. Well, it all started when Miss Stella Blade said she wasn't available for the gig. Stella said, why don't you call Miss Bambi Guns? I called Bambi. Bambi said, sorry, hon, not my kind of gig. 
But baby said, why don't you call Miss Bunny Trouble? I called Bunny. Bunny said no. But Bunny said, baby, why don't you? Why don't you call Miss Sparkle Penny? And I did. Miss Sparkle Penny stumbles into the restaurant. Even today, I can see her move toward me in her dirty blonde bouffant as she struggles with her little girl toys. She says, yeah, yeah, just like the hip hop boys. She shines as she slides into a seat. So green, so bright, so small, so in demand. She says, I think it's beautiful what you have done. Then she goes away to put the rest of her makeup on. But in my eyes, on my cheek, in my food, on my drink, in my script, on my negative, she left a trail of glitter. That night at the show, Miss Sparkle Penny dances around. She throws her clothes down. She flicks ahead of me to give her more. And in the sound, the crowd goes crazy. And after the show, she stays late. We talk close. I'm now weak, but I failed to keep my distance. Then a weekend at the beach, two nights in my room, a kiss at the yoga center. And in my hair on my chest, in my bed on my desk, in my she left a trail of glitter She meets me for dinner down Avenue A She's got a short black dress and an awkward sachet She wants me to see that her clothes are all clean I ask about her necklace, she says, someone gave it to me We walked her temporary home on Avenue D In a wet July heat we kiss in the street Then she looks me in the eye And she says, I want to date other guys Then she lets go and I know it's over But in my ears, on my couch In my sink, on my towel In my spit, on my negative She left a trail of glitter I wish I could say it was all over But I've learned that my past carries forward I try to date new women, but I can't get close to any new girls Cause I keep finding out the hard way that women who don't wear glitter They know they don't wear glitter On third and second on 6 and D From backyard on 10 when we got dessert for free At the corn dog stand on the Coney Island boardwalk On the lawn behind the stage when you got confused by my jaw In the frozen margaritas at the Bryant Park Cafe In the chalk at the Bradby School Thank you, Andy. Thank you, Bob. Stick around, you guys.